About a year ago, I did a what is in my pilot bag video, but that was when I was a student pilot. Now I'm a private pilot and my equipment has changed a little bit. So in today's video, we are going to do an updated what is in my flight bag video 2022. Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Luke and I'm a 17 year old private pilot living in upstate New York. In this channel, I document my journey from student to professional pilot and share my aviation experiences with you. Before we get started, I wanna remind you that we have a Flying Eyes sunglasses giveaway going on right now. If you wanna know how to enter that giveaway, then click up here to go to the video where I explain how to enter. Now let's hop into the video. So starting off with what is in my bag is something that I talk about a lot and that you see me wear in all of my flying videos. This is the Bose A20 aviation headset. This is by far the best investment that you can make as a student, private, or commercial pilot as they are so comfortable and it will make your experience in the cockpit way more enjoyable. Moving right along, I think I had this in there the last time I made this video, but an iPad, it's pretty self-explanatory. For flight, that's what I run on here. Make sure you have an Apple Pencil, but don't forget to have some pen and paper in your bag too, because pen and paper never die. Sometimes this does, and I have had times where I've been copying down a taxi clearance or something like that, and this guy dies. So definitely paper and pen as well. Next up is my logbook. It's pretty self-explanatory, but some people do say that you shouldn't keep this in your flight bag when you go on trips just because it's not necessary. And you know, God forbid something happen, you may lose this guy. So on longer cross countries, like when I do my charity flight this April, I'm not going to bring this with me. I use Log10 Pro and that's what I can record everything on until I get home and I'm able to put it in here. Next, I have my audio recorder. I get a ton of questions in the comments section about how I record my audio in the cockpit and this is the answer. All it is is a pretty generic ATC audio recorder. If you literally type that into Google, you could probably find this one. I don't really remember the brand, um, but it works great. I plug that into my phone and that's how I record ATC audio. If you do want a video though on how I record videos more in depth, then make sure to tell me down below. Next up in this front compartment, I'm not gonna pull it all out, but I have things like you know, house keys, an airplane key, my medical certificate, my pilot's license, and my FCC radio permit. So basically, just the stuff that you need on a day-to-day -day basis, some of it regarding flying and some of it just regarding getting back in my house. And now into this compartment. So starting off with the Century Mini. Again, such a good investment that you can make as a pilot. This plugs into the USB port on the panel. It gives me live ADS-B GPS moving map on my iPad, and it gives me live weather. It's so good. This has definitely made my flight so much safer, and just it's another way to navigate from your VORs, dead reckoning, GPS. You can't go wrong with a Sentry Mini, and it's pretty cheap for what you get. This next thing is probably one of the most important things in my bag. You probably want to think of it, but that's batteries. You got to have AA batteries, especially when you wear an ANR headset like the A20s, because those do go through batteries about every 20 hours of use. And I personally don't keep track of when I put them in, so it could happen at any time. That's why you always need batteries, because the headset is not good when you don't have that noise canceling. Next in this side compartment here, I have Certified Foggles. This is made by my buddy Kyle McClung. They've actually rebranded to a company. Now they are Scanners Sunglasses. So basically what these are for your IFR training, you wear these. It's like being under the hood, but it's much more stylish and it's much more comfortable. So go check out Scanners IFR glasses. They're super helpful, especially if you're an instrument student. I'm not gonna pull every single one of these out, but also in the sign compartment is a lot of my GoPro mounts. These are the suction cup mounts that I use. They're from a company called My GoPro Mount. They're super good. I got these sent to me and I'm super grateful for that. Uh, these are high quality, they're industrial, they're built to survive, I just dropped it, and uh, they are great mounts, so I highly recommend checking them out if you wanna film in the cockpit or even if you have a Jeep and you just wanna strap one to the side. And last but certainly not least, in this compartment here, I keep a 
charger. Just a USB power bank. This is so important to have. I don't care what airplane you fly or what kind of flying you do. If you use an iPad or any type of technology, about 90% of pilots have this in their bag. This is super important just because we do so much with technology, our phones, our iPads, if it's calling or using ForeFlight or making calculations that it could die at any time. And you always gotta make sure that your iPad or your phone is at 100%. So definitely make the investment if you haven't already and get one of these guys. So that is what is in my bag. Now I wanna make a quick point before I end this video. And that is that, as you can see, a lot of this stuff is expensive. Building a good flight bag is not cheap. And what I wanna say is that it's done over time. You don't need everything that I just talked about all at once, and I didn't get everything in here all at once. You get things as you need them. If you're just starting flying and you just are taking your first couple lessons, then you probably don't need A20s, you don't need an iPad, and you don't need a lot of the unnecessary stuff that I have in here. Yes, it makes flying more convenient, but you'll find that you don't need that until you figure out what type of flying you're doing and if you're really serious about aviation. Because the worst thing you can do is go out and buy all this expensive gear and then realize that you don't really like it or get denied for a medical. So with that being said, that concludes this week's video. If you did enjoy it, let me know by clicking the subscribe button down below, dropping a like on this video and leaving a comment on what you keep in your flight bag that maybe I don't. I also keep some survival gear that I didn't really go in depth about. I may make a video on that because I am doing my long charity flight loop for the troops this April. So I'm definitely going to be taking some precautionary measures for that flight. So until next week, I want you to stay current, stay proficient and keep the blue side up. Keep flying safe, everybody. And we will see you in next week's video. Take care. I'm just good at caring too much.